Oh, ho, ho, ladies and gentlemen. Hello and welcome back to the Seagull League. We're taking a look at another wonderful game for all you fine folks out there as I just get these overlays looking oh so beautiful. Yes, indeed, you duty, all you wonderful people out there. We are taking a look at the Seagull Dota 2 League. It is a continuation of uh, a lot of great action that's been going on, uh, not just in the CIS region, but all over the freaking globe, it feels like. Uh, Dota 2 is alive and well, and we got some wonderful matches uh, that are coming up for you over the next several uh, couple of weeks, I would imagine. Um, again, looking at this league, it's been going on for a while. Started week one all the way back in February uh, before the world went on crazy, uh, just in case anybody's missed a lot of the rest of this league. Uh, went on to week five of group stage action that continued on and finished up on March 31st. Uh, and now we're into the playoffs. So this is really where uh, you know these teams are hoping to be able to to make their money. It's a long grinding uh, sort of continuing league, which is why you sort of see a couple of the more tier two oriented teams. Although I will say, uh, you know, with a couple of these teams, they're starting to make the rounds of the bigger circuits, and you could see, um, you know, you look at Viking and GG is in this set uh, in this team. You've got aggressive mode. Granted, still some questions about that team where it's going to fill out. Um, and, and I would say that Cyber Legacy is up there with amongst some of the teams that are more well known. Uh, you know, you've got a, a bunch of pretty solid dudes. It looks like the tag up is a little bit weird right now, but of course, Palantimos, Pikachu, uh, Diara, Big Num, all these folks are uh, hopping into this one. Um, it Five does look like remain. for a little while, and I think that Last Hero is a stand in for the team right now. Uh, and it's unclear to me, based upon these names, if Lil is playing or not. Um, of course, he was playing previously. Could be stepping in. We'll find out uh, once we actually get into this game. And then Khan, um, I think a lot of people might not be as familiar uh, with this team. You've got a couple of people that are really, um, maybe not really well-known, but I think that people that watch a lot of Tier 2 Dota know them. Uh, Cheshire Cat and Yamich. Um, and then, of course, the Kazakhstani team. Who they get their namesake from, uh, Naive and Arrow, who are also playing on this squad. Choose your hero. So we're already well through the draft. Uh, had a little bit of trouble getting everything set up, but it does look like things are more uh, under control now. It does look like the teams are all, or all the, the tags are correct after the fact, uh, once we're actually getting into the game and they're choosing their, their heroes. So that's good to see. Um, and who is it? Pikachu, Diara, Big Num, Palantimos. And it is last hero that's standing in. So no more Lil. Uh, that was the uh, changeup that we had seen previously. Wonderful. So we're ready to go, guys. Game number one, Khan facing off against Cyber Legacy. There's going to be two games that go on today. Uh, this is, of course, a double elimination tournament. But these teams starting in the lower bracket. Best of three, loser is out. Would love to be able to keep their hope alive and go up against, of all teams, Empire Hope next match which uh, is going to be taking place at a date to be determined let's hop into the draft see what's going on in this one see if i did my overlays correctly oh my god i always love it when i do that's a wonderful feeling so yeah uh empire hope they played just the other day uh april 20th which was yesterday uh against aggressive mode and unfortunately they were unable to unfortunately for them they were unable to overcome uh the aggressive mode lineup and so they are now in the next round of the lower bracket Waiting to face off against the winner of this series as we just get some lovely little ha ha he -he's right at the beginning. Um, you always have the pause right at the start of games. I don't know if it's just consistent amongst like, dusky, dusky. you know, pubs dusky, dusky. and officials if it's all the same or what's going on. Some of these teams may be feeling like they need a little bit of a smoke break or something beforehand. Um... Just get a little bit of talk from other people. Uh, perfect. Perfect. Let me make sure that this player is showing up. Beautiful. Guys, we are doing it. We, we are absolutely killing it. Absolute and lootly killing it. So the game gets started. Um, and as far as the matchups go and what we're seeing, it's kind of interesting, right? You've got this like very high mobility. Well, maybe it's not all high mobility heroes, but people with like decent movement speed. I guess I was thinking about it. Um, like, troll always feels really fast to me, but now 
when you don't get those agi buffs to movement speed, it's going to be less so than it used to be with this lineup. You're you're not going to be quite zooming around at the same like crazy speeds that you had seen previously. Um, but they have a Storm Spirit, and whenever I see a Storm Spirit versus Medusa matchup, it always feels like you've got this indomitable wall in your Medusa that is so hard to kill. But she's kind of like slow moving, hard to be able to like make any real action happen um, and like make moves around the map with the Medusa. It's made a little bit better because you've got this Chen in the game. Uh, so likely you're going to be able to like recall people where you want them on the map. Uh, so that's at least a way to make it feel slightly better. Um, and that was one of the big issues that you would have previously, you know, in the, the old games was that um, you, you ran into these issues where you weren't really capable of, uh, as we see a trade off there, Cyber Legacy can pick up two bounty runes. Um, you weren't really able to move around the map that well. Uh, everything just kind of sucked. Man, I am going to have so much trouble trying to keep up with these player names because the, the match isn't ticketed. <laughs> this is, is going to be really bad. Uh, but you know what? It's going to be fine. We're going to have a nice time together, guys. We're going to watch the Dota 2. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. So expect to see a lot of Cyber Legacy zipping and zapping and zooping around the map. Uh, you know, maybe an axe jumps on somebody with the call and then the Storm Spirit's able to come in afterwards and go for the big old jump onto him. Things like that. Uh, I'm imagining CTCT is Cheshire Cat, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's probably right. As they're going to get a little bit of action there and to get lazy. Kind of frustrating uh, early start for him. But yeah, Pikachu here in the mid lane, facing off against the one and only Arrow. And does he get the deny? Nice. Nice. Meanwhile, Big Nam able to take down Courier. Ducalis, who already has his headdress. Nice little stack of tangos as well. For all it's good and well. Fairy Fire for Dusa. Salve War. Does he have one on Storm? Has he already used one? No, there should be another one coming out on the crate. No, he's just going for the straight up null tallies. This is kind of interesting. We'll see if the uh, Storm's able to make better use of that like early lasting potential. It feels like it's just going to be like a very one for one trade off of farm type of lane, unless there's like a severe overstep. I guess hypothetically, since Storm already has one in uh, pull, they can maybe make a rotation with like Tusk Weaver or either one of them. Like you could just go with just one if you wanted, uh, and then maybe you could try and find the Storm if he overextends. Um, Oh, he is going to get the pull back in. Remnant hits. Gets a deny as well along the way. Very frustrating. And they lose the courier. Yet again, Yamich able to punch it down. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Meantime, Weaver, having already used the Sakuchi, slowed down. The stun's going to be there, but the snowball comes out. And that will be enough time for afterwards him to have that Sakuchi still up. So Ao taking some more right click damage. He also needs to be a little bit careful. It's so easy to overextend on either of these guys. Is Ducalis gonna be controlled? Nether Blast, almost enough. They've got another one here if he wants to go for it. Pops it out. Ooh, good dodge to the side. They have the courier back here too. Are they just gonna be able to bring down this Pugna? Ducalis is getting lower and lower, but they take one point now. They're gonna pull in another hero. And this Pugna, I mean, I think he's dead. Maybe? Chance? Oh, Snowball. Moving on in. Trying to catch them with the shards. Another couple quick punches. And it is going to be first blood. Drawn by Yamich. Good pullback in there. Uh, using Divine Favor early on and just making use of that Tusk rotation. And Axe. I mean, he's going to try and cut the wave here. So... For all that pressure that they were applying with the Pugna, they end up kind of losing out on it afterwards. A pattern here. Very interesting. In Ooh, that hurts. Victory. Damn. Dude, I just want to see a Tusk rotation towards mid. Like, I, I really think that they could kill this Storm before six. He's playing kind of far up too. I guess though that now knowing the Tusk is like gone, he's going to be playing it a little bit safer. But there is hypothetically a world in which is, we see Storm take the, or rather Chen take the Harpy Storm Crafter. Um, there is a world where maybe he could have tried to rotate in. Like, yeah, he's going to go there now, but this feels a little bit telegraphed to me, right? I guess it gives the map or the uh, rune control 
which is important. It's going to be an invis rune up top, and that's going to make Storm so afraid. Does he even see it, though? He doesn't quite see it. Last hero gets the kill on Ducalis. So Storm might not have seen that invis rune um, as they do take down the Chen. Safe lane DK. It's making a little bit of a resurgence, it feels like, as they will find the Grimstroke. My line. Again, I kind of wonder if it would have been worth it just to like run in there and go for the storm. Although I guess that you're having a good time on the Medusa right now. So one more punch breaks out. No. I was just trying to see us. The shark cat fine. This dude's crazy. He's been playing Dota for so long. It's insane. Troll's just keeping his courier back there. Wants to make sure it doesn't get taken out. Last hero in the meantime. Keeps on tanking through this creep wave. And with another wave coming in. And having the Horpy Stormcrafter nearby. Actually a little bit of body blocks there. Not quite enough mana. So yeah, it looks like uh, he should be able to get out of here. Does he have shards? No, it's just tag team. Yeah, and hiding for the moment. Gets the vision. Pulling the chin. Doesn't need to. Tag team, another couple punches, easy piece. It was actually one of the lane creeps that got the final hit as Weaver, just our cat. Getting a little bit aggro there. Bottom tower is under and attack. wisely, the Grimstroke is just going to walk away. He knew that if he tried to turn and man up against the Weaver, he was just gotten killed off. Weaver's so hard to kill. Like, five armor would have Sakuchi back up again afterwards. Like, not the highest mana pool in the world for sure, but it's uh, kind of a... I, th I think about it almost sort of like a Terra Blade, where it's like deceptively high armor. Everybody kind of knows that Terra Blade has high armor. Uh, people don't think about it as much with Weaver, but yeah, it's spooky. So Tusk has just been sitting here underneath this ward. Um, now, I, I think you could say, well, this is, you know, a waste and all that stuff. Um, but if they can get a kill here, then it does make up for it. And might just be able to do that. Last hero, they turn, try and find the jump in. Dragonite's getting somewhat low. He's got to back up. These spins were dangerous. They do throw out the ice shards afterwards, trying to get more pressure onto this tower with the catapult wave. Last hero taking a lot of that damage over time. They do manage to bring down the Tusk, but now with the second creep wave coming in, yeah, you got to glyph this wave for Cyber Legacy. This DK and the catapult are going to really rip it up. Level three on both of the other supports, and then it's just the five on the axe. So it looks like they are finally going to back out. Well, no, they're glyphing the wave. They've got the Harpy Stormcrafter in there as well, so maybe they can try and tank through this, but eventually it's not going to actually happen. So a bit unfortunate there for the DK, not able to get more damage onto that tier one. Uh, brings it down very low, but it's always nice if you can kill off that tower with the first dragon form um, granted it's not like super necessary i think that they're going to be perfectly fine with that but it would have been a nice win for them um, and i guess that in a way it does also free up a lot more space for your medusa while this is happening right like you had to bring a bunch of supports over storm kind of just wants to farm up as well get into his items so it's buying more space for the medusa um, the biggest loser so far to the laning stage has really uh, it feels like been the Weaver. Cheshire Cat hasn't been able to have a great game for himself so far. Right clicks coming out. DD. Storm has a lot of mana left. Yeah, Medusa actually kind of needs to be a little bit careful. If I'm Storm right now, I think you like try and farm up, use your jungle, maybe even walk back home afterwards and then show up at the DD. And it looks like he wants to just use it to farm. Sometimes what you see Storms do with it is they'll go for, like, uh, a rotation to try and find a kill with that DD. But you can see that Pikachu right now, he's just thinking, I am the win condition for my team. I need to be huge by any means necessary. Like, if he makes that rotation that you would normally see from other Storm Spirits, um, and he doesn't manage to find not just a kill, but, like, really key kills, uh, then his team is just super far behind at that point, which is really frustrating. Good item there for the Medusa. It's a nice little poor man shield pickup. So that's another eight damage onto Dusa. The Agi working. Bottom lane. 
more right clicks. And this is that second dragon form that I was talking about where you really want to take down this tower with this one if you can. I mean, it's not like the end of the world, but ideally being able to like keep that pressure on. I mean, again, they have the late game to some extent with the Medusa. It gets weird with Storm, but stun there onto Axe. They get the deny. Grimstroke finds it and the big old call afterwards, Snowball. It's going to work there. Might end up burning down, still hanging onto the stick charges. Pops them there towards the end, throws out the shards. Able to just barely latch on. Ducala's going to do some good damage. Does have another recall if he wants to use it here. But getting those two kills is super clutch. And yeah, I very much appreciating the uh, Tusk's solid play there. Yeah, you can see that uh, right now it's mainly just that Weaver that's not having a great time. But likewise, you know, the supports of Radiant are having a little bit of a better go of it as well. Sharecat, time lapses, force that another Scucci, and then just going to go and get that other uh, bounty rune. So looks like Cyber Legacy end up with three bounty runes, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, bottom lane. DK, they're just running at him now. Storm Spirit shows up, but Medusa is here as well. And you can see they realize I, we can't take this fight. It looks like they're going to lose the axe yet again. Last hero goes down. Arrow picking up the kill. They can't quite finish off the Grimstroke, who does manage to TP out of there. So big rotation. Uh, does Chen have a recall to get anybody going? No, he used it in that fight. So that's one thing that's a little bit frustrating is that you end up with, you know, five heroes here uh, on the bottom lane, which means that you are sure play of are they really going to make this happen? I mean, Weaver's here. I think they do. Oh, my God. That's so clutch. Dude, this Tusk, he is killing it right now. He's going to die to that tower, but that is so worth it. Um, they do have the troll nearby. Kind of got to be a little bit careful. And, yeah, they're using this next dragon form just, like, off cooldown, keeping the pressure on, making sure that they're constantly trying to pressure. This, uh... This is a nice play coming out right now from Khan. They're doing what they need to do. 2,000 gold lead already. I mean, that's what's scary, right? Like, the DK managed to get level 6 really quickly. It looked like the Chen was doing much more work trying to contest the Axe's farm while still being able to pick up some farm here and there for himself and get some levels. You can see right now the Chen ahead of all the other supports in the game. Um... <laughs> And because of that, you end up now in this situation where, like, even though your Weaver's not having an amazing game, he doesn't need to. He's going to be going for the Spirit Vessel, probably the Aghanims later on. Like, that's, uh, that's nice. Again, Khan on the Radiant. Looking like they're in a good position here. Cheshire Cat might be dead. Oh my god, I can't believe the last year didn't keep checking. <laughs> Cheshire Cat is so afraid right now. That's crazy. Um, Dyer's top tower is so yeah, attack. that is, uh, as we get another snowball jump in here, find and get lazy, stun is going to be there. Can't quite kill him off, unfortunate. Um, but what I was saying is that, like, because you ended up in that weird situation where Dyer's your your Chen is contesting the Axis farm, attack. like, it doesn't matter that Weaver's that far behind. He's got to earn now. He's going to be in the middle of these fights oftentimes. Uh, can go for that Aghanim Scepter later. And then you've got an Aghanim Scepter behind a Medusa or a DK, you know? And, and this is a, a lineup that isn't going to fall off later. Like, a lot of the normal issues that I identified in the draft, which were, okay, mobility issues for the Medusa and the DK, who aren't, like, the fastest jump around heroes in the world, some of that gets solved by itemization, uh, a la the Dragon Knight Blink Dagger that just got picked up, and, of course, the Chen Relocate as well, Divine Favor. Another snowball in. We've seen this story before. Mr. Grimstroke. This time, Tusk learns his lesson, and Naive able to clean it up with a little brief fire. So now with all of the outer tier 1 towers taken down at 13 minutes, you're going to see Khan move in and start to pressure the first of the tier 2 towers now. Um, there is some movement over here by Pugna trying to get some courier snipes along the way. We'll take down one there. It's just, it's just a running through here, murdering. It's just murdering couriers. Dude, what the hell? Oh, uh, get another one. Get another one. Go get it. No, he can't get it. It's a travesty. Yeah, whatever. He got those couriers. He's happy about it. He's not happy. All right, they're having a bad game. 
Or Cyber Legacy. Or Cyber Legacy. Well, Kaya's picked up now for Storm. Again, Lake. Oh, it breaks immediately, and they didn't realize. Oh, that's so frustrating. If he would have known that they would have moved, but they didn't move, and they didn't know. Maybe he's just going back to farm the jungle or something. He might die, though. Dude, he's got to be so careful. Are they just going into Roche? Yo, these guys are crazy. Khan are outside of their minds. Surely you must move in and go for this, right? Are they really not? Dude, they saw them. All right, well, regardless, that is uh, that is a, a good pickup there. It, it could have been something just as simple as Cyber Legacy, like either not watching. It, it's weird, right? Like, because they saw them move over that direction. Maybe they just didn't think that they would go in and take Roche, but that's part of the strength, right? It, that's part of the strength of having this Weaver with Swarm, um, even just level one, and then having the tag team. It's so much damage. Jump in down bottom. They cannot afford to lose this troll right now. Last year, wanting to go in and make a move, but this is this is really, really rough for him. Poor old troll. It's got some bugs on him. Trying to run away. Goes out with the whirling axes. And, uh, hoping to do anything, but it's just not going to work. Damn. Damn. Collis. It's <laughs> like, <laughs> come at me. Dude, I got Hand of God still. Oh my God, he didn't use Hand of God to stick. No. All right, well, Chen gets exposed a little bit there. Shire Cat, they got a lot of creeps over here. You gotta be careful. It's like playing a bullet hell game. Storm just trying to dodge away from hoof stomps and little things coming out. So 2,000 gold lead right now. As Nikila gets picked up. Ooh, God. Dude, he's just messing with them now. Pikachu. Storm. I will say that uh, right now, seeing some pretty good uh, gameplay come out from Arrow. I mean, this is... God, he's getting such good neutral items, too. He gets the Aquila. Ooh! So we see the kill there onto Big Nem. Khan picking it up with the naive Blinken. I mean, the real worry, though, is that this is DK like being mobile around the map, right? That's the, the, the biggest change that I feel like we've seen recently. Um, and why we've been seeing some amount of like either safe lane or mid lane DK get picked up again is because this blink build, the soul ring, embracer, like you're so hard to kill naturally just as it is. And then if you add in the ability to just blink on top of somebody and get 2.5 seconds stun, it's like, I mean, if you think about, you know, Ember, for instance, right? And why that hero is so good, it's because he can constantly jump for that next initiation. He could jump for that next fight. And that's what this, in a way, DK kind of gets you as well, right? It's like, okay. Oh, another good shards there. I think that last hero should just be dead. Another couple of hits. He has a dragon tail. Throws it out. No. Walrus punch. Turn around. Has the DK gone a bit too far? Looks like he's going to get punished. Hand of God comes out trying to live. They have a snowball safe. Pulling him in the very last second. But... Pikachu is going to finish them off. They jump in now with that Medusa. Good stomp onto the troll. Can they kill him off in time? Yale able to get that ultimate off. And then they find the pull in and the kill off onto that Tusk. Troll is still living. He's getting life drained back up, living by virtue of the Pugna. Medusa is completely out of mana at this point. Storm Spill kills off Ducalis. And Cheshire Cat, Spirit Vessel done. Do they have enough to kill him? They're not going in. Storm is living, but I think with Weaver chasing, that's eventually going to be the end of it. They burn through the Aegis. Four dead already. And it looks like they will lose Big Nam as eventually Cheshire Cat takes him down. But the Cole comes out. And again, no more mana on Cheshire Cat. Ah, last year, not willing to go for it. But a big win there. Uh, maybe unnecessary buyback coming from the Pugna. But all in all, very impressive showing. But yeah, that thing that I was talking about, though, um, of as we're just seeing more blood <laughs> randomly dying around the map. Um, I think that part of the reason that this this DK is like coming back into to Vogue a little bit is because you can like sort of play a similar way and and do some of the best parts of what Ember does, which is have that like slightly low risk initiation 
The reason that Ember's risk is low risk, uh, the reason that Ember's initiation is low risk is because you can reach really far without having to commit. And you can, like, the slight chains is really, really strong. The reason that DK is really low risk commitment is because it's so hard to kill him, right? Like, you look at this guy, 18, 2,000 HP right now, roughly 20 armor, um, and then a 2.5 second actual stun on a pretty low cooldown. So, like, in the same way that Ember can go for, like, slight chains, keeping somebody in place, the, the same type of thing can come from the DK. Um, like, look at that. I mean, granted, Radiant he committed pretty down. hard. They find the Weaver right at the start, but the Decrep comes out to keep him alive. Is it going to be enough? No. No, no, no. They lose the Tusk as well. Does the Decrep actually kill him off? And now that DK is dead as well. The turnaround has just been so unreal. It's four dead. Like, so quickly. And that's, that's how quickly something like this can happen, right? You find somebody right at the start and just like an overextension. And suddenly, they're going to blow them all up. So much damage dealt there, and a lot of that was with Medusa not in the area. I think that this is one of the problems that you sometimes see, right? Is that you want to, you know, that the right move is to control the map, you know, that the right move is to, to hold on to these like high ground areas and stuff like that if you're radiant. But it's like prescribing the, the prescription for how to win the game with not all the pieces right in place, right? Because they, they would have need the Medusa there with Stone Gaze and everything up, like, ready to go right as that fight was going on. But she wasn't there. Now, whether that's, you know, on the Medusa or whether that's on the team, it's kind of hard to know exactly. In, in the meantime, you can see Pikachu just sort of... Oh, what the fuck? to find that stun. See, that is a moment where Ember might have been able to get the kill and not end up dying. Or it would have been able to get the, the stun there, the... the cancel the tp um see so yeah, i don't know it's a uh, it's a weird situation right now because you still probably have the better late game to some extent on this dusa like troll versus dusa kind of sucks if you have to go into ulti but that's predicated upon troll being needing to like pop his ultimate and into the stone gaze right if you don't if you don't have enough damage to really threaten the troll, Radiance top tower what's his impetus attack. for needing to do that? He doesn't need to just pop ulti. He can just like slowly whittle her down and burn mana through defusal. And if you get Sanjinyasha, then it's like really scary. He's actually going for MKB next. It's the big jump and comes on a Cheshire Cat. They have the call afterwards. And last hero able to find a killing spree for himself. This is. Yeah, this is the problem. Like, Axe Blink Dagger comes Radiant's online, and now, like, every big jump from Storm Radiant's is just a kill. The only Double one who might be, you know, fortified. slightly immune to this would be the Dusa. Again, after taking all but one of the outer tier two towers, it's this big question of, of how do you how do you close out a game? Top tower has it takes a lot of... Uh, it takes a whole lot of discipline and like high level map movements to understand you can't let up for a minute because um, you know a lineup like this that's built around pickoff oriented takedowns can really frustrate and be hard to deal with the pings come they know they're in there and again this is one of those moments like they're making that move in but they don't have this medusa so I don't know. Maybe it's fine. I guess that likewise you don't have the storm on uh, Cyber Legacy. So that's a better example, right? Like Cyber, this is the exact same mirrored image, right? That previous fight that happened that turned the whole dynamic of this game happened here. And it was Khan wanting to hold this high ground. Well, and then Medusa left to go farm this other high ground. Here it was Storm wanting to farm this high ground while the rest of Cyber Legacy tried to hold this high ground. Cyber or uh, Khan runs in. They try and come over and take over this area. Cyber Legacy back out, head over the other side of the map. They dodge the fights when they don't have that other core nearby them. And part of the reason that I think you can do it better is just because of the uh, the the dynamic of who these heroes are, right? Like Storm, it's much easier to show up to a fight uh, to than the Medusa. The the caveat being the Chen, 
So if you can pull in the Medusa with the Chen, then that makes it much better. Um, holding right now 4,600 gold on the Medusa, the butterfly in the inventory, or rather in the, the quick buy. Also got ourselves the Heaven's Halberd, which is going to be really nice against the troll. Definitely not like all is lost, and I think that there's something to be said for uh, Khan's draft going into the late game. It feels like they can definitely um, make some pretty solid moves, but it's going to be predicated upon uh, the map movements and reading of where the enemy team is. Roches are going to be another big one. Weaver's almost got this Aghanim, so he's about 1,500 gold away. That's going to make a huge difference. It's going to make an enormous difference. Medusa not quite able to get into that smoke. There's a ping out right now. They want to play around this ward. They're going to spot the Medusa walking down to the low ground, anticipating that they're going in just for the bounty oh, rune. Dragonite breaks smoke, jumps forward, finds the stun onto the troll. Not bad a person to start, but they have the decrep already there. Taking over the Banishers, so that way they can get the Decrep taken off of them. And Medusa trying to be this bulwark in between them, but a big jump in comes from Last Hero. They try and take down the Chen. He is going to die to that Orchid reveal. And in the meantime, they pop the Stone Gaze. And this is into the Troll ulti. Great fight right here for Khan. If they can finish it off, and it looks like they will. Now jump forward. Good silence onto that Dragonite as well. So he's need to wait for that one to wear off and then jump in call afterwards onto two. Is it quite going to be enough? They take down Naive. Now, can they find any more damage out? This is still a really hard to kill Medusa. This Cheshire Cat wasn't able to make anything else happen. Right clicks coming in fast and furious as Storm tries to zip away and, well, a hand of God from Chen who ends up healing back up again and last hero is going to go down. So they managed to take down three Storm barely able to escape from My that mess reward. and you can see there one of the problems that comes out from cyber legacy's draft is that right now they don't have the damage they need to deal with medusa really really slick play right there by the chen also taking over the banisher in the middle of the fights so that way they could take off the decrep from the uh pugna as we see cheshire cat was moving out before the storm met the long distance zip on so well yes you're not going to be able to catch the storm necessarily there's also this fact that you're going to have a lineup that is really hard for the storm to kill. Stupendous. At least several of these heroes. Medusa, Dragonite, they're hard to kill. And then behind all of them, you've also got this Weaver. So the key in this game, to me at least, feels like you need to find a way to keep the Tusk alive and you need to find a way to keep the Chen alive. If you can do that, then I think this game is going to be won by Khan. Um, otherwise, Cyber Legacy is probably going to take it. Because if you just have the Dragonite and Medusa left over at the end, right now the items that they've got, it doesn't feel like it's going to be enough to just like out damage them alone. And if these guys are left completely alone, like if it's just the Medusa and the Dragonite at the end, they're not going to be doing enough damage to like stop them from just dying. Maybe with the Rapier that changes with the Medusa. But with Dragonite, at least he's going like this BKB route. Like after the BKB is done, it's like, what are you going to do, right? Right now, Medusa has a lot of damage. Maybe with the Rapier, it's actually enough. I, I think that they can do this if you're con. Cyber Legacy, on the other hand, got to cut waves, got to find pickoffs, got to go for the, the sort of split pushing style and try and wait until you can spot the Chen, wait until you can spot the Tusk, and take them out at the start of the fights. I think that this Tusk is probably going to need to go for something besides this Blink Dagger. He doesn't need to be a snowball stage in this game. He needs to get something to take the Dispel or to take the Silence off. Maybe, though, he does keep going for the Blink Dagger and he just tries to outplay them with his position. That's a dangerous proposition. Roche is going down. Jump in, stun, onto one. They find a little bit of an opening there. Cheshire Cat, Invis, hiding off to the side. Walrus Punch, they're controlling this Tusk. Got him taken down. Silence onto two. Double Life Drain as well, as they do manage to get the slowdown. A couple more right clicks onto this troll who's backing away. Looks like he's going to be okay. So they buy back on the Tusk. And that's what I'm talking about, right? Like, if you have the Storm that can find the Tusk in these fights, it becomes really hard for you to take a four-on-five engagement. You, you, you need the Tusks to stay alive. He's really important. So, bugs go out. Storm jumps in. Kills off the Centaur Conqueror. Uh, 
So you right clicks come through trying to take down Roshan. Took the Mystic Snake cooldown instead of the Stone Gaze duration. A little bit surprising there. And she does pop Stone Gaze. Picks up the Aegis. And now is ready to come. And about 2,800 gold pick up her Rapier. So it's going to be a, a little bit of a weird timing, right? Because you probably get that Rapier around what? Like, I don't know. Four minutes? Four or five minutes right now? which is the duration of the ages. So you'd really ideally love to be able to pick up the rapier as the game is, as you pick up this Aegis. Um, and the fact that, you know, you're kind of being, gonna be a little bit behind the ball there might be a little bit frustrating, uh, I would imagine, for, for Khan. Has Medusa died this game? No, 305. So, yeah, Arrow's been having a good time farming it up, making sure he's making all the right moves. I guess with the bounty runes, that's going to get it a little bit quicker. But he's still, like, a ways away, right? How much longer do we have on that Aegis? Another four minutes, roughly. That's going to be uh, it's gonna be a tough one. Because I, I guess, though, at that point, they can just go high ground. But it's going to be, like, a minute, minute and a half left, ideally, for them. Dragonite ready to go in with the uh, ulti. Does have that arcane rune, which would be a nice timing for him. Again, they're, they're in this weird spot, right? Like, this would have been the ideal time with Dragonite having arcane rune, pop the dragon form, push down, take the bottom tier 2 tower. Uh, and they still might do that. Like, I could see Dragonite popping this dragon form again. But doesn't look like he wants to do it. Bottom lane, last hero, ready to cut the wave. Or just jump on somebody if there is a person to jump on. Doesn't have blade mail. It's Medusa. Just gonna keep farming up the jungle, pushing out the wave. Getting herself nice and farmed up. But yeah, has the sacred relic done now. And real close to finishing off that rapier. It looks like they are trying to get set up to push with the rapier here. It's still a couple hundred gold away. Oh, Chen, don't you take those creeps. What are you doing? Dude, he's so close. How are you just going to take that from him? What the hell? Dude, I would be so tilted if my Chen was doing that. What's he even trying to buy? I guess maybe just get buyback? Yeah, buyback's actually pretty important for him. Radiant's if Chen can get buyback, that's really attack. key. Because then if he dies, he, at the very least... You know, he's going to be able to, to have a little bit of extra impact in the fight. So this is actually, that, that was probably the right play. So he's going to have buyback for this next fight. They're going to go high ground. They still have, so Medusa was farming a little bit faster than I thought she'd be. So she's about a minute and a half. Actually, it's right on time. I said, God, I'm so good at Dota. <laughs> she's going to try and push down tier three towers right as this is happening. Already troll is here, but they need to deal with this, right? Like after this goes down, I think they just walk mid. Because they have a creep wave here. I, I think that they can just do that. And you're not going to push as fast as the Medusa with Rapier. They're going already over towards mid lane. As Chen creeps take that one down. They're going to lose a lot here. Wind hero, jump in. Silence there onto Medusa. Still has the Manta. Okay, pull back onto two. Control, Axe call afterwards. But there's the Weavers. Time up. Th this could just be over right now. Honestly, I don't know if they have what they need to deal with this. Like, look at that. The Pugna's just dead. Buyback comes from the Pugna. The, 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 we've seen this happen time and again. They have a big old jump in. Soulbind on to two. The call, is it going to be enough? I don't think so. They do take down the Dragon Knight, but this Medusa is still large and in charge. Time lapse again. Gets the ulti off. That was a bit of a misplay. Now you have Weaver ultimate back up in seven seconds, but she could die in that duration of the time. Decrep is there to try and keep her alive. Right click's coming through. Medusa goes down. Rapier on the deck. And, well, they, they might have actually just lost. Oh, wow. Did Troll pick it up? Oh, goodness. Who has it? Who has the rapier? Grimstroke? Dude, are you kidding me? Why did you spam pick that up? Why did you, why did you pick it up? Oh no! Oh god! 
All right, yeah, he's dying to the ancients. All right, that's the play. This, this, this is your punishment, Grimstroke. <laughs> Take that. Oh man. Invisibility. I mean, so that that is the problem. Um, <laughs> yeah. He's just laughing at him. <laughs> this is your punishment. Take that. Uh, I think it is relevant. The Radiance oh, middle tower is under attack. Dude, he had so much time to wait. So now Troll has a rapier. Radiance middle tower has I fallen. can't believe that happened like that. So there, there were a couple of misplays there. The, the Medusa, I mean, I think it was the right play to go for the split push the way that they did. I, I think that one of the big problems, though, that came out there was the Medusa... Base, it's at 18,000 gold late all of a sudden. Um, the Medusa popped Stone Gaze before she went down that first time. And that meant that they were free to just jump on her afterwards. Like, ideally, I guess, do they have any... They could have called her right out of it. But maybe you just let her die on the, the first time with the, the Weaver. There, there are so many different ways that it could have gone better. Um, maybe that was the big one. Was either the Weaver, like, using time lapse too early... And then the other one was the Medusa popping the stone gaze. It's like you don't you don't want to commit that hard to keep her alive because then you don't have anything afterwards to make it work. God, that's gonna be so frustrating for Khan. Jesus. Just look at this. It's like I mean that's that part of that six thousand gold lead is switching the rapier over, but this is the space of like three minutes, you know? My goodness. Poor folks. Um, well, Khan now in a very unfortunate situation. Uh, the only real option is Medusa trying to get another rapier. Like, you need to kill... I, I don't even know what your play is at this point. I guess it's still the same type of thing where you have big tanky heroes. And you just try and, like, blow them up. Swell comes out. Dust little bit late and a dd troll 760 damage a pop with this rapier i mean the scary thing is he doesn't have bkb but if he pops ultimate like everybody's dying like everybody's dying dire are scanning well storm breaks it you get vision over to the side pull him back in they see the dd troll and they're still running in to kind of fight this is this is oh god no say it ain't so he's got the pull in a second oh, he doesn't have any more but the jump in just completely destroying them there is no way to fight that gg it's just over dude arrow it's pissed i'm sure that's a frustrating one that's a really frustrating one Ooh. Damn. My God. Well, 18 to 24 is the final score. Uh, and that one turned around mighty, mighty quickly. Mighty, mighty quickly. Uh, <laughs> there's a five minute delay on stream. And I was looking at chat and everybody was like, ah, Khan's got it. They're going to, they're going to own. They're going to kill it. They're going to be fine. Oh, no. We'll see if they can make things happen better in game number two. Stay tuned, everybody. We are going to continue our coverage of the Seagull Pro League right after this. So we're going to go to a quick break.